My parents are pushing me to shoulder the blame for my sister, but that's a line I won't cross. Throughout my life, I've meticulously maintained the image of the perfect child, and I refuse to compromise that now. Hey, everyone, how's it going? This platform is quite new to me, but I hope you can grasp the emotions I'm trying to convey and understand the turmoil I'm experiencing. Being a guy in society, there's this unspoken expectation that I shouldn't express emotions or seek support. It's as if I'm supposed to be this stoic figure, always shielding those around me. Initially, I thought this was a universal perspective on how guys should be. But as I grew older, I realized it was more of a medieval mindset ingrained in my family. Let me provide a brief background. My parents never wanted me. To this day, they still don't. I spent my life hearing how they had hoped for a daughter, and my arrival as their firstborn son left them devastated. They even contemplated giving me up for adoption, not wanting the hassle of handling a boy. You might think this is an exaggeration, but I'm living proof that such situations exist. Three years later, my sister Kate was born. After years of yearning for a daughter, they finally got what they wanted. It was a day filled with celebration, cakes, laughter, everything that was absent at my birth. As we grew older, my parents started favoring her over me. I became her designated protector, as if I were her bodyguard rather than her brother. I tried desperately to gain my parents' approval. Good grades, participation in sports and clubs, internships, I did it all, hoping they would treat me like their son. But it never happened. Throughout my life, I've internalized the belief that I hold no value and the only person who matters is my sister. Kate, on the other hand, has been spoiled her entire life. Anything she desired, a simple request, and my parents would fulfill it. We weren't exceptionally rich, but the disparity was glaring. While she received everything on a silver platter, I had to beg for even basic necessities for school. It was an injustice, acknowledged by everyone, including my extended family, but no one dared to confront my parents. It's like they fear the same mistreatment if they speak up. To make matters worse, both my parents are the eldest siblings in their respective families, amplifying the power dynamic Anyway, things recently took a sharp turn for the worse. Let me fill you in on the details. You all know about the hype surrounding the new iPhone, right? It's practically the only topic of conversation these days. So my sister, being the spoiled one she is, had her heart set on it. However, for the first time in history, my parents dropped the bomb that they couldn't get it for her. Kate has been pushing boundaries lately, sneaking out with her boyfriend in the middle of the night and her academic performance was on the edge of disaster this semester. This was the perfect opportunity for my parents to rein her in and make her prove her responsibility before rewarding her with the latest iPhone. Kate didn't take the news well at all. She cried for almost an hour, pleading with my parents to reconsider. Even though she already had the previous model, she still yearned for the newest one. My parents, being super soft for Kate, took her to her favorite restaurant to cheer her up. They invited me to join them, but the disdain on Kate's face made me decline. She treats me like a disease, avoiding me as much as possible. Even her favorite meal at her beloved restaurant couldn't satisfy her, and she continued to beg for the new iPhone. Then, out of nowhere, she stopped. Not a single word about the phone for an entire week. I found it suspicious and tried to tell my parents, but they got mad insisting that she had learned her lesson and matured. It infuriated me, but I kept quiet. And here comes the biggest plot twist you'll ever hear. A week later, she waltzed in with the new iPhone in her hand, the seal unbroken. We were baffled because there was no way she saved enough from her job, and none of us gave her money. As it turned out, she stole the money, or technically, items worth a lot of money. For context, my Aunt Sheila and Uncle Peter are super rich. They own multiple cars, their own house, and they're decked out in designer brands for everything. They go on lavish holidays every summer. Despite their wealth, they're surprisingly humble. Their daughter, Amelia, is close to me, and she's the only one who truly understands me, even though she's not going through the same struggles. She's genuinely nice and always there for me. Whenever I needed someone to lean on, 
Amelia has been the sister I wish I had. She got married around three years ago, and despite the almost seven-year age gap, we still get along exceptionally well. Recently, Amelia held her baby shower at her lavish home. Even though she's no longer under her parents' supervision, her husband, and she maintain a lifestyle comparable to what Amelia had while growing up. Their baby shower took place about two weeks ago. Here's where things took a turn. Katie, my sister, made a significant mistake during the baby shower. She stole Amelia's belongings. Amelia, always trusting to a fault, didn't notice it at the time. I observed Katie repeatedly disappearing and returning looking jittery, with her eyes darting around nervously. Now, knowing that she was in the process of stealing, her behavior makes more sense. But back then, I was confused and didn't confront her since I knew she pushed me away. The truth unfolded a few days ago when Kate came home in a frenzy, crying her eyes out. It was late at night, and her erratic behavior startled everyone. When questioned, Kate confessed to stealing Gucci, Channel, Louis Vuitton, and even a Hermes Birkin bag from Amelia's closet during the baby shower. We were all shocked, unable to comprehend why she'd resort to stealing when our financial situation didn't warrant it. Her reason? She desperately wanted the new iPhone, and since Dad wouldn't get it for her, she decided to take matters into her own hands. Kate explained her elaborate plan. She took one bag at a time, concealing it under her dress, and then walked to the garage, where she stashed them in our car trunk. It took around ten attempts before she managed to pilfer everything she wanted. Not only did she steal expensive bags, but she also took Amelia's jewelry from high-end brands like Dior and Cartier. My parents were devastated, Kate was in tears, and I sat in the corner of the living room contemplating how she could do such a thing. Initially, I thought about informing Amelia to put Kate in her place, but the fear of being disowned by my family held me back. What truly hurt was realizing that my own family could do this to me. When Kate began panicking about potential discoveries, we attempted to convince and reassure her that no one would find out if she kept quiet. However, her confession came when she noticed a CCTV camera right outside the garage door, the same route she took to reach the car. If Amelia noticed her missing items, the logical step would be to check the cameras. Kate was in a bind, and my heart felt a slight satisfaction because I hoped she would learn a lesson. Unfortunately, my parents dumped the entire chaos on my plate. After about 30 minutes of her crying and our attempts to reassure her, my dad decided he had enough. He told Kate to calm down so he could think, but I knew I was in trouble when his gaze shifted towards me. I could sense that he planned to use me to save Kate and harm me in the process. He stared at me before opening his mouth, confirming my role as the scapegoat. His plan was for me to take the blame for the entire situation if anyone traced the stolen items back to Kate. I found this absurd because my family already didn't value me, and now Dad wanted me to further degrade myself. He expected me to tell everyone that I forced Kate to steal from Amelia for my own gain. I resisted because, first of all, Amelia would never believe it, and secondly, I didn't agree with the plan. This disagreement sparked a massive family fight as they all expected me to comply with their wishes. However, I was my own person and refused to be seen as a thief just to protect Kate's reputation. I fought back, expressing my unwillingness to agree to their plan. They got aggressive, and Kate even started bullying me in front of our parents. They did nothing about it, and she taunted me, claiming nobody cared about me, and it didn't matter how they perceived me because they already thought poorly of me. My parents remained silent, using me as a shield to protect their own child. Filled with anger, I tried to show them how their actions were affecting me. But they didn't seem to care. At that point, I didn't even feel like their son. I was merely a tool to protect their interests. I screamed that I wouldn't agree and left the room, retreating to my living room. For a day, nobody spoke to me, but then the treatment turned harsh. Reluctantly, I agreed one night storming off to my room. However, over the next few days, I began to wonder if complying would make them like me more. Their terrible behavior continued, 
confirming my suspicion that they treated me badly because I didn't agree with what they wanted. Hoping that complying with their wishes might earn me their favor, I agreed. Surprisingly, they started treating me more like a human once I voiced my consent. At this moment, I'm somewhat convinced that it might have been a good decision. I'm optimistic that with time, the family will forget about this incident and things will return to normal. However, there's an underlying fear that they might begin treating me like a criminal. My only prayer is that Amelia doesn't notice anything is amiss. In the first update, it became evident that Amelia figured out the situation. She noticed her belongings were missing, prompting her to delve into the matter. Last week, we received a call from Amelia, and her tone sounded angry and devastated. My mom picked up the phone, putting the call on speaker for everyone to hear. It was apparent why Amelia was calling, and I braced myself for the fallout. Uncertain about the decision I had made, I didn't want to be labeled the bad guy by every family member. Yet, changing my mind at this point would lead to chaos, and I'd be blamed for everything in my entire life. When Amelia called, my mom ensured I understood my role. As soon as my mom picked up, Amelia's demanding yet not loud voice filled the air, a stark departure from the quiet and confident Amelia I knew. She immediately began asking where Kate was and insisted on speaking with her to understand the motive behind her actions. Initially, my mom feigned ignorance about the situation, feigning innocence, which only fueled Amelia's anger. Amelia watched the CCTV footage and discovered that Kate had stolen purses and jewelry. Expressing her deep disappointment and demanding Kate return everything, Amelia's revelation made both mom and Kate nervous. The situation escalated when mom pointed the blame at me, asserting that I forced Kate to steal because I needed money, including a PlayStation 5 bundle. This accusation caught Amelia off guard, causing her to go silent. Knowing how close we were, she couldn't believe that I would be involved in such wrongdoing. Despite my attempts to deny it, mom insisted on painting me as the instigator, and I had to say it out loud. The heartbreak in Amelia's voice was palpable. Confirming that I was the one who betrayed Amelia was an unforgettable moment. Though I couldn't see her, I could only imagine how awful she must have felt. To be told that someone you trusted so deeply had betrayed you must have been shocking. She hung up without texting or calling, and I understood her silence. When I confessed to being the one who did it, she attempted to understand the situation, but I couldn't find the words to explain. In the second update, my entire family treated me poorly after the news spread. Amelia and her family shared the details with everyone, and since then, I've been bombarded with calls from concerned family members questioning my actions. Recently, we celebrated my little cousin's birthday, and my uncle insisted that I stay home, fearing I might steal something from their house. The isolation from the family left me close to tears, a feeling many might dismiss because I'm a guy, but I have feelings too. Feeling excluded from the family due to something I didn't do, Kate came to my room. Instead of showing sympathy, she dismissed it, telling me not to make a big deal out of it because everyone would forget in a while. She left without acknowledging the pain I was going through or the sacrifices I've made for her. While preparing for the birthday party, I sat alone in my room, contemplating the unfairness of life. Amelia texted, asking why I did it, but I had no response. Feeling lost and abandoned, I ignored her message. I hoped my family would finally recognize me as their son and feel some love for me after going through this ordeal. Alone at home, I grappled with the harsh reality that my family no longer wanted me around, fearing I would steal. The hurtful words and messages from my family over the years replayed in my head, reminding me that I wasn't the son they wanted. They made it clear that having Kate was the happiest day of their lives. While I was left alone in my room, contemplating whether I wanted to continue this charade. However, I'm not so sure I have the courage to go against them either. What would you do? Update number three. Okay, here's a bit of an update on the situation. Do you guys remember how I wasn't sure I wanted to do this at all anymore? Well, I stuck to that and reminded myself that if my family doesn't care about me, I can care about myself. Initially, I was really scared of retaliating because even if I did, 
It wasn't like anybody was going to believe me or stick to my side. Well, that's what I thought. However, a few days ago, Amelia called me and told me she needed to meet with me. I was skeptical about it. Even though we were like siblings, there was still a rumor about me stealing her belongings for selfish reasons. I didn't know what she wanted me to say or do when we met, but I knew I couldn't say no to her so I went. We met at this little cafe down the street, which used to be our favorite during middle school. Going there with so much going wrong in our lives felt like we were tainting it somehow, but it also felt like we'd get out of there with something going right. When we got there, I realized that things were going to be okay. Amelia did not look angry as I thought she would be. She actually smiled at me when I entered and told me to sit down. She seemed really calm, so I had a bit of hope that she would listen to what I had to say. After the basic pleasantries, she asked me why I was holding up the entire news of whatever was happening. That's when I broke down. I didn't start to cry because I've had it so engraved in me not to do that. But she could see my face and how much this entire thing was affecting me. I saw genuine concern on her face when I looked at her. The concern on her face when she asked me what actually happened is something I'm going to appreciate for my whole life. It made me feel comfortable enough to tell her what exactly happened, why I did what I did. She understood why I did it because she knows I crave my family's validation, and I've been craving it for years. Obviously, if I was going to get an opportunity to try to fight for it, I'd do it. However, she kept frowning as she looked towards me, constantly shaking her head as she heard about everything I've had to manage this week. After I was done, she looked at me with pure concern and told me I was ruining myself for my family. She explained to me that I should not ruin myself just because my family does not appreciate me for who I am. It's not my fault that I was born a guy, so I should not have to pay for it either. Hearing her tell me how unfairly I was being treated and how she's always known that I wasn't capable of doing something as crappy as what they said I did made me feel like she was the only one who truly understood me the only one who would always be by my side through everything. After that, she told me I should let everyone know the truth and not let my family, especially Kate, walk all over me like that. However, I wasn't sure about that because I didn't know if I had the courage to go against them and still live in the same house as they do. But she told me that she'd be on my side the entire time, and if I needed extra support, she was going to act as a witness and tell everyone what actually happened and how unfairly everybody in my family treated me. At this point, I don't know how I'm going to manage it, but we've come up with a whole plan. I just hope I can convince everyone that it wasn't me and make everybody see the true face of my family. Update number four. So, we've come up with a plan. Basically, I have to convince my parents to host a dinner that everybody would be invited to so I could tell them what happened and expose my family. Initially, I didn't know how to do that because how was I going to convince them to host something? But then I realized I could make myself look worse in front of them and use that as an advantage. So, I told them I wanted to apologize to everybody in the family, even though they knew it was me. I was going to apologize so that they feel more pity. It took me a while to convince them to do it. At first, they did not want to go through all the trouble just because I wanted to apologize. They told me to just send a text message to everybody and get it done with. But then I tried to get emotional with them. I told them how I didn't want to do it over text because the entire essence of the apology would be ruined. After an entire day of trying to convince them, they agreed. Amelia and I prepared everything in the two days that we had. She got the CCTV footage from her home that showed Kate stealing, and I took a screenshot of all the vile things that she told me and made me cry. Kate knew I hated doing something like that, so she reminded me not to mess it up every time I met someone from the family. The plan was to play all of this on TV in front of everyone so that they would see what the truth was. Instead of me playing it, though, Amelia was going to do it. My parents might get suspicious if I say I want to show the family something, so to be safe, Amelia will do it. Then came the day of the dinner. Before everybody arrived, my family reminded me not to mess it up, and I had to act convinced and tell them I would never want Kate to be in danger or ruin her reputation or anything like that. 
They seemed pretty convinced, so I think I did a good job of that. Anyways, when everybody came over, we had dinner and talked about some random stuff. During the whole thing, everybody was giving me the cold shoulder and Amelia had pretended to do the same so nobody would get suspicious. After everybody was done eating, I offered to apologize to everyone, but before I could start, Amelia told me to keep quiet because she had something more important to show. When she opened the TV, the first thing she did was play the video of Kate stealing everything and putting it into the car's trunk. Nobody actually knew this part because Elia's family just said I stole it. So gasps of shock could be heard throughout everybody sitting in the living room. That's when I stood up and announced what had actually happened. I even showed them the text that Kate had sent and finally exposed my entire family. Even Amelia joined in and told everybody how she was a witness to how unfairly and badly my family treated me. After hearing that, everybody started attacking Kate and my parents and expressing their anger for doing something like that. Amelia announced that she was going to sue Kate and ruin her life. My parents looked at me with anger while this entire thing was happening, but my uncle noticed what was happening. Immediately, he called me forward and told me if my parents ever gave me any more trouble, I could come live at his house. Right now, I'm actually at his house because my parents seem too angry and anxious to ever be nice to me again. I'm just hoping they calm down enough, or else I'll just have to figure out a way to move out. Even then, ungrateful Amelia took my side and helped me expose my family because I've never felt more relieved than I am right now. I don't know why the family would ever want me to go ahead and take all the blame because that is enabling the sister who was a thief, toxic, rotten, manipulative, you name it, that's what she was. I want to shout out to Amelia, though, because without Amelia, who knows how this story would have ended. I want to know your thoughts on it, guys. If you were in Oka's position, how would you go about handling this? Drop your comments down below in the comment section. My name's Mr. Reddit. I narrate stories every single day. So if you guys want to be a part of these daily drama stories, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. But do remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.